Hi folks, let's uh, get back to a bit of uh, wet in wet using the hakes, uh, just two hakes, medium Ron Ranson hake and uh, large Ron Ranson hake. Now I live in London, UK, and these ones were sent to me, hadn't been used by Glenn, who lives in Hawaii. Came all the way, 12,000 miles, I think, to, to show his uh, appreciation of my painting. So thanks again, Glenn. Still going strong. Uh, right, OK. This is a piece of 200 pound Saunders Waterford high white, not pressed, cold pressed. It's cold pressed, as it is not. It's not hot pressed, it's cold pressed. So we'll have a go at it. This was bequeathed to me by my, or not bequeathed, donated to me by a friend. He didn't want to do watercolours anymore. He found them a bit, well, it wasn't what he wanted to do. So he sent two packets of this, that's Dennis Eaves. So if you're watching Dennis, thank you very much yet again. Much appreciated. I had a pack of this, 20 sheets, 200 pounds, and a pack of the uh, Buckingford. Countless tubes of unopened watercolours. So I'm still sort of, still using them. Look, the, he bought them at uh, markets when they were cheap. Well, they're about cheap, but they're very good, and I will use them. Paint boxes, all sorts of things. Uh, right, okay. So I'm going to. Uh, I've wet the paper, so I'm going to put in a nice bit of bit of uh, raw sienna. I'm going to put this on its side in a minute when I just get some colour in. Now I want to get a little bit, bit in the water. I'm going to do a, do a water scene. I love water scenes. Keep it simple, stupid. K-I-S-S. -S. Okay, so I'll just get a bit of that blue, that lovely ultramarine. It's uh, quite a nice day in London. I might have to close my my blind if the sun gets a bit too bright. Uh, a little bit of red in there. Quite a, a lot of cloud about today, but I tend to sort of paint the uh, sky that is well, not paint it exactly, but but there's a nice bit of uh, sun as well. So just let that uh, soak in. That needs to be more of a cloud colour. So a bit more red. Oh, right, that's a bit of red in there as well I think. A bit of light red. Not a lot but Okay. 
okay. Now we'll put that back to where it is. Now even with the 200 pound paper, it does buckle. So what we'll do is just take the tips off and put it tight and re-clip it. There we are. And have a swig of my cup of tea. I don't like uh, lifting out with tissue. For me, it all, I used to do it. It becomes a crutch. Like you overuse it. And you can see it in folks' paintings where they learn a technique and then they do it to death. You, to a certain extent, you can lift it out while it's wet with a, with a dry sort of brush. But I want that effect. Let's just keep that vertical first. Just a little, little while longer. See, I've had this uh, board here that I do, do most of my paintings from on. A piece of ply with a bit of a wardrobe that I cannibalised years ago, many years ago. But you get attached to things, don't you? I use a bit of uh, uh, flimsy ply for when I want to show you show my palette and me painting with the palette, but it's not a way, it's not, not really practical with watercolours. So I try to tell you what colours I'm using. Right, let's get the small hake or the medium hake. Oh, I, I ordered a couple of one inch varnish brushes from Curtis Ward. Uh, and two two inch varnish brushes turned up, so I got onto them. They're very good. I ordered through three by originally. Very good, Curtis. Well, I've ordered stuff from there in the past, and I said, if you said, it said, oh, we'll replace them. Um, don't worry to send them back. Keep the ones you've got because it's our fault. Um, but I, the two inch, I don't need two inch. Oh, I need these for my oil painting. Although this is a nylon one, but the one I want a bristle, something like that. Inch brush, and they're very, very good for oil painting. They're short, but they do wear out eventually. Look, this is a bit worn out. I'm going to wear out they do other things. Look, you see, there's a much used inch varnish brush, Pro Art, but they're good quality. But what happens after after quite a bit of use, the little pins in the ferrule that hold the bristles into the, into the wood, onto the wood, they eventually come out very tiny and lose them. So what I do, I get an, a, another couple of veneer pins, the, 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 the thinnest ones, punch them through, clip them off at a certain length and then bang them over the hammer. Then I've got, them, I've got it back again. Perfect. Right, okay, so we're going to use a bit of paint spray now and a bit of background. We're going to have to go quite heavy now because I've used quite a bit of dark in that stormy sky. But you see what's happening to it. So, no, you don't want it too wet. You always remember wrong man on, on a video that I first watched. Don't want it too wet. You don't want to fiddle. That's still too much water. So let's just. Although the paint is a bit sloppy. One thing about having so many paintings, I can work from them. This is simply going to be similar to one I did for my patrons yesterday. You want to, if you appreciate what I do, you want to contribute, you can always go on PayPal or or Patreon. <coughs> I've got 450 plus videos on Patreon and the, I charge a minimum price of £3.50 a month to watch them, to join in. 
Can't grumble at that. I must be about the cheapest patron on there. Okay, as far as I want to go with that, let's get some heavier stuff. That's almost tube consistency now. Just Payne's Grey and Ultramarine are great bedfellows. Okay, that's it for that. Let's re clip it. I won't put any of these on Etsy, my Etsy channel, because they, they cost too much to post. They, they, I don't think they'd roll up in a th to a three inch diameter tube. They might, I'll have a look later. But, but it's easier to use the uh, or more convenient to use the £90 one, which I, which I do love, I must say. Right, okay, so um, I'll give that a bit of a try now. So you take your headphones off. Should be enough. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to do some spring greens, spring greens, some uh, yeah, spring green trees. Just finishing off my mug of tea. Anybody enjoying lockdown? I think a lot of people will miss it, but <laughs> we'd have to go back to work, provided they've been. Um, getting paid for being off for a year, mostly. I'm, I, we miss our friends. It's, 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 we've been sort of cooped up. Although we do see people, we're not uh, being too uh, literal about it all. But I have friends that are. Might have to get that soft fat burnt sienna. Look. Get it a bit, a bit wet. There's probably so many bristles stuck in it. That's better. Oh, let's mix a bit of burnt, uh, raw sienna with that as well. Now let's just come in here with a. darker stuff in here. Okay, let's uh, add in some uh, a bit more dark, so I have some Payne's grey and a bit of uh, raw sienna, burnt sienna will give you a burnt umber.
Okay, well, we'll get more dark in there. Right now we'll put in some uh, heavier greens now, so a bit of paint's grey, a bit of yellow. in there. I'll take that uh, bank a bit further. Okay, I'll do. Try not to repeat myself there, so paint's grey, paint's here yellow, got a rich green. dark against there, counter change against that blue. And then we'll get some spring greens, just some yellow. Some of that paint is quite sticky. We've got a bit of shadow there. Oh, this one. We've got another one in here. Right, okay, uh, lost a bit of council change there, so we just get a bit of that blue to put that in. Sorry about my head. I'll go in a bit later when that's a bit more dry. Uh, uh, we'll put a bit of a foreground in now, I think. A foreground, well, I'll do them quick, get them out of the way. A bit of burnt sienna, a bit of cagella, a bit of Payne's grey. A bit of burnt sienna, warm it up. Bit of marsh grass in the foreground. Bit of red. Okay. I'll dry that now and then I can do a bit of texture and some filigree in the trees and I just re-establish that bit there. So headphones off.
Okay, now we've got to sort out that. Now either I put a, a bit more solid yellowy green on there, but the tones are too similar. So I think I'll make that tree there just a little bit darker. I'll get my paints grey. So that's just a bit more watery. Just even it up a bit. So it's only a very, very light touch with the hake. But I do hold a lot of water to trap the unwary. Bit of uh, burnt sienna in there. Uh, this just dried off. Oh, I think we've. Uh, a bit wrong there but anyway persevere with that I'll put some impasto over that so let's give me yellow I keep meaning to buy some white gouache but I keep forgetting um, so what I'll do, um, no I won't, I was going to put some bit of acrylic out, but the acrylic will get into everything and make it opaque and we don't really want that. That's, uh, Now I think I've uh, sort of lost the plot with this one. Right, well let's uh, put in some filigree. Oh, I will. I think I will. Uh I've got to do something with that. That's. Uh 
Well, maybe, maybe. Right, okay, a radical, a radical approach now. Let's find a tray. Another tray here. It's almost a smaller one. Now, I'll go to use a bit of acrylic. I'll go to, I'm going to try to liberate it. But it's all about counter change, light against dark. Just a little bit. And see if I can reduce a touch of blue. Uh, we'll put in. See what that looks like. That should make the uh, blue look a, uh, oh, the heavy blue look a bit more, give a contrast. Right now, that's uh, reduce a little bit. Let's get a hake and uh, mix up a bit of that yellow. Oh, it was just an experiment, really. Cheating, this really. It's, they can't call it a watercolour now. Right, I'm nearly going to let it go. I'll give that a dry. I just want to put a bit of trunkage in there. to the main palette. Okay, right, let's just put some bits in here. Well, I'll sign it. I don't think it's uh, one of my best pictures, but... Okay, let's uh, put it in a mount and we'll have a look. Uh, I 
think I'll just put that a bit stronger there because the horizon's going uphill. Not too bad. And let's have a look. Oh, it was quite colourful. Don't, don't want to overload your foregrounds because when you're looking out there, you're not looking down at your feet. And, and do them quick, they look much better. But, but this is it's a bit of a mess. But anyway. Uh, it's another painting, so I hope you get something from it folks. Thanks for looking. Goodbye.